Hi and welcome back. As you can see, there is an icon before the values of humidity, wind, and pressure. We will insert these icons with the help of the pseudo element called before. Each indicator of humidity, wind, and pressure has the class called weather indicator. So we type in weather indicator before. As you already know, every pseudo element must have content. Otherwise, it will not work out. That's why we set a pair of empty quotes as the value of the content CSS property. Then, to make it so that the icon and the value of the indicator are placed in one line, we add display inline block. And to center align them, we add vertical align middle. The very first indicator has the class called weather indicator humidity. That's why we're going to set background image for weather indicator humidity before. Let's see which URL we need to specify. Here's our images folder, and the file called humidity is stored inside of this folder. So we go out of the CSS folder, then we search for the images folder, and there we find a file called humidity.png. Let's check how it looks so far. Well, no changes to the web page, because we didn't set the width and height for our pseudo element. Let's fix this by setting 30 pixels for the width and height. Here's our indicator, but it's very small. We need to make it so that our indicator takes all the space of the pseudo element. So we add background cover. Excellent, it works. Let's also add some margin here. We type in margin right 10 pixels. Now we need to add the indicators for the wind and pressure. This is the class of the wind indicator. Copy this line of code and paste it here. Don't forget to replace humidity with wind. This is the class of the pressure indicator. Aha! Here we forgot to add the pseudo class called before. Again, copy this line of code and then replace humidity with pressure. Let's check it out. Oh, looks awesome. Really nice. Now, for the temperature, we're going to increase the font size. This indicator has the class called Weather Temperature. That's why we specify font size 60 pixels for this class. Looks good. Well, right here, the margin has to be larger. So let's set margin bottom for the search input. Let's make it 20 pixels. Okay, there. Now we're going to add some CSS styles for the 5 day forecast. So we set width 100% for the class called Weather Forecast. Then to center align the text, we add Text Align Center. To make it so that all five articles of the five day forecast are placed in one line, we add Display Flex and Justify Content Space Between. Well, the icons are too big, so let's make them smaller. We are going to add max width 50% for the class Weather Forecast icon. It means that it is 50% out of the width of one article. Now we see all five articles, which is great. Every article has the class Weather Forecast item. 
The background is white with some transparency. Let's set 0.2 for the alpha channel, which is responsible for the transparency. Let's round the edges of each article by adding border radius 10 pixels. As you can see, there are no margins between the articles. So let's add it by typing margin 0 at the top, 10 pixels on the left and on the right, and 10 pixels at the bottom. This icon is too close to the upper edge. To fix this, let's add padding 30 pixels at the top, 5 pixels on the left and on the right, and 20 pixels at the bottom. Much better. We don't want the padding to be added to the size of the element. That's why we add box sizing border box. Alright, perfect. It looks as in the original. Now I'm going to decrease the size of the browser window to check how the web page looks when it is displayed on smaller screens. Well, the 5 day forecast doesn't look great. Not really convenient. So to fix this, just add FlexWrap Wrap for the class called Weather Forecast. Alright, the articles change their position, but each article is too big. So we need to specify the width of each article. Let's add min width 150 pixels. At the first glance, it seems that we can set width 20% for each article because 100% divided by 5 articles gives us 20%. But previously, we added margin 10 pixels on the left and 10 pixels on the right. It means that the width is 20% minus 20 pixels. To make this work, we need to use the calc function. Save and refresh. Okay, there. It would be great if this element took the whole empty space of the div with the weather details. To do this, we just need to add flexgrow1. Awesome. Looks really nice. Well, as you can see, the temperature is cut off. So to fix this, we need to set flexwrap wrap for this element as well. Type in flexwrap wrap for the class weather today. Excellent. The web page looks nice on any device. So we are done with the HTML and CSS part of this project. See you in the next lesson, where we will start working on the JavaScript section of this project. Bye-bye!